Alright guys, today I'll be discussing the story of Karen Carpenter, one of the duo, the singing duo from the Carpenters. So let's begin the story right now. Alright, so Karen Ann Carpenter was born on March 2nd, 1950 at Grace Haven New Hospital, which is now called Yale New Haven Hospital in New Haven, Connecticut. She was the daughter of Agnes Ruber and Harold Burton Carpenter. But Harold was born in Luzon, China and where the parents were missionaries. So when you just say it's his, his means it's Richard with her elder brother, Richard Carpenter. So eventually what I was going to say is that Richard is actually the oldest, oldest son of the Carpenter family. So apparently what I was really going to say is yes, the Carpenters are a singer duo but ever since Karen's death at just 32 years old I would just believe that uh, Richard is the one trying to sing all these kind of songs so he's actually like um, the the sibling duo of the Carpenters alongside with his younger sister Karen he had numerous roles for being the record producer, arranger, pianist, lyricist and composer he would sometimes join Karen in harmony vocals. So eventually, yes, I would just say that he and Karen were actually born on Grace New Haven Hospital as well. So both of them were actually born in New Haven, uh, Connecticut. So eventually, Carpenter's owner's older sibling, Richard, elder by three years, had developed an interest by an early age. She became a piano prodigy. Karen's first word was bye bye and stop it. It spoken to the response of Richard. She enjoyed dancing and was enrolled tap dancing and ballet classes at the age of four. By June of 1963, the family had moved to the Los Angeles suburb of Downey in California where Harold was offered a job for a former business associate, and he and Carpenter entered Downey High School in 1964 at just 14 years old. But she loved the school band, but she had to avoid gym classes. So eventually, the Carpenter's first band was 2 plus 2. So eventually, what I was really going to say is that he and his younger sister, uh, Karen apparently um, started the, the duo called the Carpenters back in 1969 when they were just uh, teens. So eventually, Carpenter had released their first solo, Looking for Love, I'll Be Yours at Osmond Magic Lamp label. So eventually, this was actually the complete solo album entitled Karen Carpenter was finally realized in 1996. So in a personal life, Carpenter had, had a complicated relationship with her parents. So eventually, she collected the Disney memorabilia and she loved to play softball or baseball. So what I was apparently going to say is, Karen Carpenter is actually a tomboy in my opinion because she actually loved to play softball and baseball. Now what I was saying is, not all girls definitely do like to play like all these kinds of messy sports. But I know people in America do because many people who are girls, they're normally tomboys. But in real life, as, an, as a Malaysian Chinese, apparently I would just say that I'm definitely a tomboy. As you may know right here, on my Twitter page, it would actually say Wheeling the Tomboy Gamer. Which, yes. Which, I mean, yes. I was actually one of the girls that apparently love to do all these kinds of things. Apparently, it's not the same thing as uh, Karen Carpenter did in her teen life. So eventually, for that, it was following argument at a family dinner in a restaurant. So unfortunately for that, Carpenter and Varys broke up, and she filed for divorce on October 28, 1982, when she was in the Lenox Hill Hospital. That was the day before she... That was just only like a month before um, Karen died. So Carpenter began dieting at school. She began the Stillman diet, which is a high protein, low carbohydrate, which was created by, which created in 1967 by physician Erwin Maxwell Stillman 
So that diet is actually a a diet. The diet was actually like a quick weight loss diet, which is advised by Stillman. And apparently, uh, dieters eat six small meals instead of three one large one. So Karen Carpenter actually began using the diet in her in her teens. She was five comma four and one hundred and forty five pounds. She went on the Stillman diet in nineteen sixty seven. Then she abandoned it. However, in nineteen eighty three. Karen died of complications of anorexia and nevoria. She was only 32 years old when she died of anorexia. So unfortunately for Karen, she actually had like a very, very uh, strict diet and Karen was actually um, having a thyroid replacement in 1981 by obtaining the name of Karen Burry. Unfortunately for that, what I was really going to say is that she gave her last singing performance on December 17, 1982, from the rest of the room at the Buckley School, Sherwood Oaks, California singing Christmas Carol. But according to Donnie War Warwick, she was vibrant, outgoing, and exclaiming, Look at me, I got a, I got a blue. She also began to write songs returning to California. And her idol, Wardrick, told her the last thing to do. Just before Karen's death, three days later, on the February 1st, 1983, Carpenter saw her brother for the last time and discussed new plans for the Carpenters to resume the tour. Three days later, on February 4th, Carpenter was signed to sign final papers to her divorce official. Shortly after walking up on the day, Karen Carpenter unfortunately collapsed in the bedroom and apparently the paramedics found her heart beating every 10 seconds in 6 VMP. Unfortunately for that, she was pronounced dead at just the morning at around 9.51 a.m. in the morning in the, P in the Downey Community Hospital in California. Carpenter's funeral was held on the 8th of February, 1983, at the Dewey Methodist United Methodist Church. Approximately 1,000 mourners attended, including her friends Dorothy Hamill, Olivia Joy Newton, Petula Clark, and Donnie Warwick. Her arranged husband, Thomas Burry, also attended his ring to place the wedding ring in his casket. Carpenter was buried in, Long, in Forest Lawn Mark in Cypress, California. And in 2003, her body was moved to be placed by her parents in the museum at the Pierce Brothers Valley Oaks Memorial Park in, in Westlake Village in California. On March 11, 1983, it was definitely ruled out as a drug overdose. According to that, it was amphetamine and toxicity, which was a consequence of anorexia novera. Carpenter had discovered to have a high blood sugar level at 1.1 milliliters degree. It's more than 10 times the average. Two years later, Carpenter's heart failure was caused by a repetitive of apodic syrup and over-the-counter antiviral includes vomiting case in cases of overdosing and poisoning. But she has not been vomiting because it's not the evidence. Carpenter's friends have convinced that she abused laxatives and toilet medication to lower body weight through this for this marriage to get crumpled. So what I'll just say is that anorex a diet for an anorexia is very dangerous. It's very dangerous because people would tend to to say that you're fat, but when people try to do something like that, say for example, Kara Carpenter who died of anorexia at just 32 years old. So what I was going to say is that Karen Carpenter may be the third person to die at 32 years old. First being Mama Cass from The Mamas and the Papas where she died of a heart attack and heart failure at 32 years old, almost 33, and Keith Moon, the drummer of The Who, who died of a drug overdose as well at just 32 years old. But he was definitely a struggling alcoholic, as I was actually going to say. 
that in my previous video. So my previous video for the Keith Moon story will premiere next year. Eventually it will not premiere this year because I'm sorry I forgot to do it. But eventually for that, what I was really going to say is that Karen Carpenter was definitely one of the good singers from the Carpenters. Even though she had a struggle and eventual death from anorexia that will raise awareness for eating disorders and body dysonia. So, there was actually one thing I wanted to search up. So how did Karen Carpenter die? So Karen Carpenter was the lead singer of The Carpenters. She died of a heart failure due to struggle of anorexia on February 4th, 1983. Karen Carpenter was only 32 years old when she died. So eventually what I was going to say is that anorexia is very, very dangerous for people, especially when you want to try to lose weight. It actually is a treatable med medical provocation and requires a test level of imagining. It, it's most common in females and can be dangerous. If it's life-threatening, it's very dangerous for the person to uh, struggle with this kind of uh, anorexia thing. Anorexia is a very, very dangerous thing to do, especially for teens when they're in, in, their, in their almost adult years. So it will get to an extreme weight loss, pain appearance, impulsive fear of gaining weight, fatigue, insomnia, dizziness or fainting, and you get dry or yellowish skin. To prevent that, avoid punishing or rewarding your children with food, especially teens. Avoid doing that so you won't have to end the same fate as Karen did when she was very young. Karen would have been 72 if she was alive now, but I do believe that Richard Carpenter, who was Karen's brother, is still alive, so don't worry about it. Even though Richard still misses his sister, Karen, I would just say that during the time in the 70s, both of them definitely did sing a lot of songs such as Top of the World, Close to You, Please Mr. Postman. Now, when you say Please Mr. Postman, Please Mr. Postman was actually a song by The Marvelous. It wasn't recorded, originally recorded by the Carpenters. It was recorded by The Marvelettes. So The Marvelettes is actually another old um, band, which was in the 60s. So eventually what I was going to say is that for the second Christmas season following Karen's death, they instructed the new Carpenters Christmas called Old Fashioned Christmas, and there was a recording material around it. Richard also released the first solo album ever since Karen's death. It's the sharing vocals between Donnie Warfield and Dusty Springfield, aka Mary Isabel Catherine Bernadette, which was her real name. So it we so it's when we all type was a tribute to Karen who apparently died of a heart failure which led to anorexia. So apparently there was another song right here which is Jambalaya Down the Bayou. So Jambalaya Down the Bayou was actually sung by Hank Williams. Originally, yeah, it was sung by Hank Williams first. However, the Carpenters actually recorded their own version of the song when Karen was actually in stage. I'm sorry, I cannot show you that video because you know how much uh, pressure it's gonna get to me. But this one is apparently going to be a little messy because uh, that one is apparently copyrighted. As you may know, I apparently did sing that song in my second YouTube channel. It was like terrible, you know. So apparently, what I was gonna say is that Jambalaya on the Bayou was actually this recorded by the singer Hiram Hank Williams on Jul in July of 1952. It was named for a Creole and Cajun dish, jambalaya, which was a rice dish, meat and rice vegetable. But there was also another version called jambalaya, which was actually in the Papa's game, Papa's Pasteria to Go. Eventually for that, it replaced the Valentine's Day in the PC game. Ever since then, Scarlet from the Shark, from the from the scar from the Scarlet and the Shakers band apparently favored Mardi Gras. So apparently what I'll just say is Jambalaya on the Bayou is actually similar to the Mardi Gras uh, celebration. So eventually what I was gonna say is that 
They probably do have a Cajun cuisine such as jambalaya, crawfish, filet gumbo. So it's actually a spicy hub which is from the North American Southwest tree and gumbo. So apparently, the carpenters apparently did their own version of jambalaya on the bayou. So eventually what I'm going to say is that, yes, I was right after all. So eventually it was the carpenters that uh, recorded this song, which is an internal pop version now and then. It was a single uh, outside the United States. And this was actually um, 10 years before uh, Karen died of anorexia. I would just say it is horrible. It is um, bad for a person, especially a teen, to die at this age when they definitely do have um, anorexia issues or developing their uh, diet. I suggest you guys not to do this kind of diet challenge. It can be very dangerous. It is very, very harmful. Even though I saw people doing it, please don't do that one. It's, it could be very dangerous and it's very fatal. And apparently what happened is Karen Carpenter eventually vomited in the toilet. So I'm not really that sure what happened, but I think she passed out and died. So eventually, guys, there was a documentary saying that Karen Carpenter had um, died uh, while vomiting and having like a drug overdose. But I do believe it's true. And let me tell you guys this straight. When people definitely die at a young age for anorexia, like many teenagers do, they want to be skinny, but it doesn't mean that way. You should love yourself. You should love yourself for who you are. Even though you eat too much, I suggest you guys not to do this dangerous diet. This diet can be very, very dangerous and it's very harmful for anyone to do it. So for my advice, please do not do the anorexia diet. Don't do any diets which are very dangerous or recommended by doctors. Because sometimes when you have this diet, which is called the Stillman diet, if you try to abandon it, if you try to eat a lot of this, you could seriously die. Anorexia is a very, very dangerous thing to do, especially for teens around the world. So we suggest everyone, do not do this diet, especially for females. This diet is very dangerous and it can harm anyone. People would die of this. It's not an okay thing to do. Anorexia is one of the main leading causes of death, especially when you do these kinds of things. Anorexia is not a challenge. It's not that it's not a funny joke. So apparently anorexia does actually mean that if you don't want to eat that much, you can, but you'll end up getting skinny for the rest of your life. So I suggest to people have a healthy diet, don't end the same way as Carrie Carpenter did back in 1983 because I've noticed people are trying to be a lot like Karen Carpenter. It's not okay. The diet is not okay and I'm not comfortable with this. Even though I still do eat a lot, but apparently guys, don't try this diet at home. That diet is very scary because of this, many people died of anorexia and and it's caused due to heart failure. This is not okay. This diet is not okay. Because of this, Kara just actually lose a lot of pounds, you know, like a lot of pounds ever since then. So apparently the real reason why Karen Carpenter was driven to around was given to anorexia is because Karen just thinks that she apparently like said that she wants to be slim. So apparently it's a complication due to anorexia. So guys, one last warning. Please, don't ever try to be skinny like Karen Carpenter. You know what happened to her back in 1983. It was a terrible experience why Karen Carpenter did die at just an early age of 32 years old. Now what I'll just say is that yes, you can, you can diet by yourself, but you can't diet that much. It is not okay. It is considered to be one of the painful deaths you can ever imagine for people having anorexia. And the causes of anorexia is a heart failure or you can vomit a lot. It will also lead to fatigue. Unfortunately for that, when Karen just returned to the hotel, she was actually very uh, 
sluggish. She was very fatigued. She unfortunately did uh, collapsed in the room, and paramedics tried to revive her, but unfortunately she was pronounced dead. So apparently, guys. That's all I really need to say for now, and this is my advice why you shouldn't really do this kind of challenge, like dieting challenge when you are a teen, especially for females who are trying to lose weight and cope with this. I suggest you guys, please do not do that. It's very dangerous. It's very, very harmful for your health. It is not okay. And guess what? You'll happen. What happen? You will lose a lot of pounds. It is not okay. It is one of the dangerous attempts that people would ever do in real life, especially when people are trying to develop this thing called the Stillman diet. The Stillman diet may be dangerous, but please do note that only a recommended doctor can do this. If it's not a recommended doctor that can't do this, I suggest you guys, please don't do this. Do not do that challenge. That challenge is one of the most dangerous anorexia dieting challenges uh, especially when people just try and do something like that it can be very dangerous and it can harm people's health it is not okay for teens so what i suggest to you guys is always always ask a doctor for help especially when you're dieting too much if you are just trying to diet too much please tell your parents immediately so they can take you to the doctor don't end the same fate as Karen Carpenter did because of Karen like uh, just did, did this on in her own way like uh, trying to like eat that much she's just trying to like lose weight she's just trying to do something like that that thing is not okay because this thing is going to harm your health and guess what will happen to you you could seriously die this is actually like the, the kind of reasons why People who struggle with anorexia normally do these kind of things, which is a bad habit. It's definitely one of the dangerous habits. First being the al first being the alcohol addiction and drug addiction. It's a very dangerous habit as well. So what I'll do is consult your doctor first. Don't end the same way as Keith and Karen did. Keith and Karen also did like very dangerous things, especially with drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and anorexia. They, these are considered the very, very dangerous things that can lead to death at just a young age. Now, what I was saying is, yes, it can lead to death. But if you follow my advice, if you follow the doctor's advice, please don't do this one on YouTube and don't try to do these things you see in this video at home. These things can be very dangerous and these things that can cause a person to die, which is bad. It's bad. What I'm just saying is, yeah, I can just consider one of the most ungrateful things a person could ever do in real life, especially when they want to do the things they just feel like it. I just consider this, it's not okay. It is not okay to do these kinds of things, especially people with anorexia or, or drug abuse or an alcohol abuse. It is not okay. I would consider this is it's not okay for a person to do that. Now, what I was just saying is you can just diet a lot, you can, but you can't. Dieting may be, may be okay, but it can also lead to death. It can be dangerous as well. What I'll just say is Listen to my advice, guys. Don't try to do all these kinds of things that Keith Moon and Karen Carpenter did because both of them died at just 32 years old. One died from a drug overdose of Hemi Barron while trying to withdraw the alcohol symptoms and the drug abuse, and the other one tried, tried to just have like an anorexia thing, like, like she's just trying to lose weight, like having an anorexia issue. This is one of the dangerous things that people would ever do in real life. This one, I'm, I'm not going to consider this one as a good, good play. But this definitely needs to stop because this kind of addiction is going to lead to death and is very dangerous for people. Especially for people who are learning about anorexia or even drug abuse and in health class. I'm sure you know all about this, but if you guys don't know, just listen to my advice. 
what I really say in this video. So apparently, consult your physician for help. If you think that you are getting too far with the drug or anorexia issues, I suggest you guys go and see a physician. Don't wait for the last minute until you're dead. It's not going to help. You'll be dead by now, dying at a young age. If you want to live longer, listen to the doctor's advice and listen to my advice as well. But anyways guys, that's all I really need to say for now. And this is me, Cleveland the Tomboy Gamer, signing off.